basically in my opinion you should do blood work as often as you can afford it especially if you're taking performance enhancing drugs Vigor Steve here. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with my preaching about the importance of doing blood work frequently. I mention blood work over and over and over again on this YouTube channel. Basically, in my opinion, you should do blood work as often as you can afford it, especially if you're taking performance enhancing drugs. So that's what I want to discuss in this video because I got a lot of questions from you guys. Which markers should you test for? How often should you check those markers? And which niche markers are beneficial when you're taking performance enhancing drugs or thinking about taking performance enhancing drugs. Before we get into all of that, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Do me a solid, hit the notification bell button so you can get notified whenever a new video drops. We're going to discuss my personal vigorous lab panel, which is available at Merrick Health. Merrick Health supplies blood work and patient care coordinators for health screening and health analysis for people residing in the United States. And you can get 10% discount on your first lab panel with Merrick Health. And whether that's on the Vigor Steve male lab panel or separate markers which you can choose yourself, use code VIGOROUS at checkout for 10% off. I want to discuss the Vigor Steve male lab panel start to finish because most of the important markers, the full lab panel, for everybody, whether they're drug-free or enhanced, is included. You can find the direct links for the Vigorous Lab Panel at Merrick Health down below in the description section. And if you want, you can get your blood work results analyzed by a Merrick Health Patient Care Coordinator for an additional $50 if you use the Vigorous code at checkout. Again, that's certainly a lot cheaper than scheduling a consultation with me. And for the people who do not reside in the United States, I have a favor to ask you. I want you to list your favorite clinic or hospital where you can do blood work screening out of pocket without the referral of a patient care coordinator or your prescribing physician. So I know in Holland, for example, you can do this at bloedwaardentest.nl. I'll link it down below. In Thailand, you could do it at Bria Labs, which has the fastest turnaround of any blood work screening place that I know in Thailand. They do it same day by email or sometimes the next day, depending on the markers that you test. I know in the UK, you have many checks, right? There's a lot of different countries in the world where you can do blood work screening out of pocket at a clinic and get same day or next day results by email. Please list your favorite place down below. And then I will combine all of that information that you guys provide in an article, which will list on my website, probably titled World to do blood work worldwide. Thank you guys so much for contributing. It's impossible for me to find all of the places where we can do this worldwide. So I need your contribution to get that article made. I'll list all of the places which I know personally where you can do blood work screening reasonably easily. For now, I just want to discuss the Vigor Steve male lab panel from Merrick Health, which contains most of the important markers which you should check every three months or once per year if you're into fitness or the bodybuilding lifestyle. Let's start with cortisol. It's important to check your cortisol every three months or so just to make sure that they're not steadily increasing if you're training for hypertrophy. Again, if you're getting closer to an overtrained state and you need to schedule a deload, you see that cortisol levels slowly start to rise. But cortisol can also rise if you're overworked or you're suffering from adrenal fatigue or you're taking a growth hormone secretagogue like MK677, for example. Your fasting cortisol levels can rise in multiple different situations. And if you see that your fasting cortisol levels are chronically elevated and your fasted glucose levels are going over 100 milligrams per deciliter or your DHA sulfate levels are getting lower and lower and lower, that's an early sign of overtraining or adrenal fatigue or something underlying that you need to address. So that's why I feel it's important to keep track of your cortisol levels because it's usually an early indication that something is going in the wrong direction. FSH and LH, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. When you're drug free and you want to assess your testosterone levels, it's important to check these two pituitary hormones which regulate testosterone production in the testicles. Now these are obviously not very important when you're already taking performance enhancing drugs and your hypothalamic pituitary testes axis is downregulated in which case your FSH and LH levels will probably be undetectable or way below the bottom of the reference range, unless you're supplementing with recombinant LH 
or urine purified FSH and LH in the form of Menopure HMG. Right? There's multiple different reasons why you want to check FSH and LH even if you're on cycle. But I think it's best for myself and you guys if I remove FSH and LH from this vigorous Steve male lab panel and consider this to be an add-on because not everybody is going to require it. Still, if you're drug-free, it's very important to check your FSH and LH levels to see if there's any issue with your pituitary and see if there's any wiggle room there, allowing your testosterone levels to come up slightly by increasing your food intake or again, taking some supplements which are known to help with testosterone production by increasing FSH and LH secretion from the pituitary. And again, if your FSH and LH levels are very high, but your total testosterone levels are still quite low, maybe TRT is a better solution for you because your testicles are not very responsive to the FSH and the LH which your pituitary is secreting. Free testosterone with an equilibrium ultrafiltration test. Again, free testosterone is based on your total testosterone and your sex hormone binding globulin levels. And with the equilibrium ultrafiltration test, you get a more accurate reading of how high or how low your free testosterone concentrations in serum actually are. It's important to test that in case you're suffering from libido issues or you're not overdoing the exogenous anabolic androgenic steroids, crushing your sexual hormone and globulin levels, which is also part of this panel. So it's very important to check your free testosterone levels, whether you're drug-free or enhanced. Same for estradiol. In this case, this is a sensitive liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry test for the most accurate estradiol readings you can get on any kind of panel. This is far more accurate than a conventional chemiluminescent estradiol checkup. And since we now understand that estradiol fulfills so many physiological pathways within the male body, well-being, neuroprotection, cardiovascular protection, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it's mandatory to keep track of your estrogen, make sure it's not too low, to miss out on all of the benefits associated with estradiol, and also make sure that it's not too high, resulting in increased water retention, blood pressure, organic amastia potentially. Prolactin is also a very important marker to keep track of because prolactin at higher concentrations really reduces libido, even if all of your sex hormones and neurosteroids are perfectly balanced. High prolactin levels can also contribute to gynecomastia progression if estradiol levels and progesterone levels or progestogenic 19 or testosterone derivatives are in the picture. Then prolactin can really exacerbate pre-existent gynecomastia. Now, if you're taking a growth hormone secretagogue, MK677, for example, or your cortisol levels are high, or you're taking progestogenic 19 or or you're smoking weed or taking other recreational drugs, in many of those cases, or frequent masturbation, in all of those cases, prolactin levels go high. So if you suffer from libido issues or you're doing any of these things that I just discussed, check your prolactin. Again, it's on a need to know basis, but all of these things that I discussed where you're drug for enhanced, there's probably a reason why you should check your prolactin levels frequently. Progesterone is important to check when you're drug-free just to make sure that all of your neurosteroids and sex hormones are nicely balanced. And when you're enhanced, it's the best indication of your pregnenolone levels because when you are, are enhanced and you take anabolic androgenic steroids or selective androgen receptor modulators, anything that downregulates your HPTA, pregnenolone production, DHEA production, is downregulated also. It's not completely shut down, but it downregulates and pregnenolone ultimately converts into progesterone. For a nice balance between your sex hormones and neurosteroids, you want to make sure that your progesterone is at least detectable. So if you see your progesterone levels are very, very low with this checkup, then it's important to supplement pregnenolone in at maybe 10 milligrams or 25 milligrams per day. That brings us to the dihydroepiandrosterone sulfate, DHA sulfate, which is the second marker you can test for your neurosteroid levels. But it's very difficult to check your pregnenolone levels or your free DHA levels. So we have to kind of assess the neurosteroid concentrations with progesterone and DHA sulfate, like I mentioned in the DHA and pregnenolone video. This Merrick Health Vigor Steve lab panel contains both. So you can have a nice balanced sex hormone and neurosteroid concentrations for great cognition, memory formation, good well-being, good moods, 
favorable libido or hyper supercharged libido if you can tolerate that right all of these markers these sex hormones are very important to keep track of and if anything is off it's too low too high you can make the appropriate adjustments to your protocol sex hormone binding globulin demonized previously and now loved due to information that many of the educators have brought to the forefront Sex hormone binding globulin is not your enemy. You want to keep this in range, ideally middle of the reference range. Of course, when you're drug free, your sex hormone binding globulin levels are going to be elevated. Then you might want to look into a supplement like boron, for example, to bring that down slightly. And when you're enhanced, more often than not, sex hormone binding globulin levels are less than favorable, single digit, or maybe below 20 nanomoles per liter which reduces your libido and reduces your anabolic potential because you have to look into it this way. Sex hormone binding globulin delivers androgens and estrogens from the liver or other peripheral tissue to skeletal muscle through the sex hormone binding globulin receptor complex. When androgens bind to the SHBGRC, it increases cyclic adenosine monophosphate concentrations within the cell which then act as a cofactor for androgen-mediated gene transcription, resulting in more, you guessed it, anabolism. And you see it with guys that suffer from terrible libido as well. In many cases, their SHBG levels are very, very low. Maybe they've overdone the provirin, hoping that their libido would increase, but it actually decreased further. Right? So it's important to check that. If you suffer from libido-related issues, you check your estradiol, you check your prolactin, you check your... DHA sulfate, you check your progesterone, your sex hormone binding globulin, and of course your free testosterone and your total testosterone. Now you have the data on paper and you can make adjustments to get everything back into range and get your libido back and then some. TSH, your thyroid stimulating hormone, very important to check every three months or so or every six months, assuming you're not suffering from a condition related to your metabolism. TSH, if it's high, it's an early indication of a micronutrient deficiency, whether that's iodine or selenium, which both contribute to a healthy metabolism. TSH, if it's very high, can also be an early indication for Hashimoto's disease, in which case you need to supplement with thyroxine T4, which is also part of this panel. You have your thyroxine T4 free, which are not bound to thyroid binding globulins, same for free T3. So it's important to get these markers checked every three months or so, your thyroid stimulating hormone, your free T4 and your free T3 to get an accurate grasp on your metabolism. This is even more important when you're taking growth hormone, which speeds up the conversion of T4 into biologically active T3. Again, T4, whether it's free or bound to thyroid binding globulin, it doesn't have any biologically active function until it's converted through the D-iodinase enzymes, metabolizing one iodine atom of the T4, that's what the four stands for, four iodine atoms. The D-iodinase enzymes metabolizes one iodine atom off, and now you're left with T3, which is biologically active. Again, this will give you a clear picture of your metabolism. I would advise everybody to check these three markers every three months or so. And if you're taking growth hormone and not supplementing with thyroxine, or you're taking something like Anivar, for example, which is known to interact with the thyroid binding globulins, which will alter your free T4 and free T3 concentrations, or you're taking exogenous T3 to speed up your metabolism, get these three markers checked more often. A comprehensive metabolic panel from LabCorp containing 14 separate markers. It's not listed here on the Vigorous Steve lab panel with Merrick Health but you can find them on labcorp.com. I'll link that down below. The comprehensive metabolic panel from LabCorp contains the following markers. Alanine aminotransferase, abbreviated to ALT or SGPT, as well as aspartate aminotransferase, abbreviated to AST, SGOT. Now, when you're training for hypertrophy, both of these liver enzyme markers can be elevated. So it's best to take a week off before you go in for blood work to make sure you don't get a false positive on these two liver enzymes, which are then caused by strenuous workouts. So if you take five days off, ideally seven days off before you go in for blood work, the increases that you see on your ALT or AST liver enzymes 
are no longer coming from the strenuous workouts, but are coming from perhaps the performance enhancing drugs that you're taking or the alcohol that you're drinking or the medications that you're taking, or perhaps you have undiagnosed non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which keeps these liver enzymes elevated. So ideally you take a week off, then you check these liver enzymes to make sure that they're within the healthy parameters. And still, if there's something off, obviously in that case, you can make the appropriate adjustments. Personally, I check all of my liver markers every month. No excuses, whether I'm off cycle or on cycle. I also check my albumin to globulin ratio and serum albumin are also used to calculate bioavailable testosterone concentrations in the bloodstream. Bioavailable testosterone is the testosterone that's weakly bound to albumin, but not bound to SHBG. And the free testosterone concentrations are not bound to SHBG or albumin. So that's the actual free testosterone, whereas bioavailable testosterone, because it's weakly bound to albumin, would be considered bioavailable. So we check serum albumin concentrations to determine liver health and to calculate bioavailable testosterone concentrations, which is also important if you want to assess if your sex hormones are ideally balanced. Further liver markers as part of this comprehensive metabolic panel, alkaline phosphatase, which can indicate if there's an issue with your liver, especially a micronutrient deficiency, zinc for example, you see that your alkaline phosphatase levels are very, very low if you're deficient in zinc. And of course, zinc metabolism can be sped up when you're taking performance enhancing drugs, which increase the rate of DNA transcription where zinc is utilized. Bilirubin, total, which is part of the comprehensive metabolic panel, but direct bilirubin is part of the Vigor Steve male lab panel. So you get both total and direct bilirubin concentrations. Important to check that, especially if you're using performance enhancing drugs that are highly erythropoietic, where you see that your hematocrit and red blood cell count goes quite high after you can discontinue these performance enhancing drugs or you use them for a longer period of time, the old red blood cells are recycled, which releases its hemoglobin content. Then hemoglobin is metabolized into bilirubin, which needs to be excreted from the liver through the bile ducts, the, the gallbladder, into the intestinal tract. Unfortunately, there's something called the enterohepatic recirculation, which allows for bilirubin to be reabsorbed. So you want to make sure that you keep track of your bilirubin levels because high bilirubin levels resulting in jaundice, which is yellowing of the eyes and skin. It's important to keep track of your bilirubin levels, whether you take erythropoic steroids or oral steroids. If bilirubin is elevated, it could be because you're destroying a lot of red blood cells and metabolizing the hemoglobin content, or there's an issue with your gallbladder. There's biliary obstruction preventing adequate bile flow, in which case you see very high liver enzymes and very high bilirubin levels, or there's a lot of enterohepatic recirculation occurring because you're not eating a lot of fiber, in which case your cholesterol levels will also be sky high, right? So this is one of those markers where you need additional markers to really assess what's going on with your health. And the globulin and total protein concentrations within serum can also give you fundamental insights into the current state of health of your liver and see if you need to make any adjustments to your protocol or your dietary food sources, or other lifestyle changes, right? You check all of these liver markers ideally every three months, but preferably every month if you're using performance enhancing drugs that can in any way, shape or form potentiate any stress on your liver. And it's also highly important to check all of your kidney markers because the liver will ultimately regenerate and heal itself, but the kidneys are a little bit more cumbersome and once you damage them, it's very hard and almost impossible to undo that damage. So you really have to be on top and take care of your kidneys by checking your kidney markers. Blood urea and nitrogen, these are metabolic waste products of protein metabolism. So when you're following the fitness or bodybuilder lifestyle and your protein intake is quite high, you see that your blood urea and nitrogen levels really go higher and higher. And in most cases, they're towards or over the reference range. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it surely means that you need to stay hydrated. And if you're not eating so much protein or not staying hydrated and your BUN levels are elevated, it might indicate an issue with your kidney. The blood urea nitrogen to creatinine ratio is determined and calculated by your BUN and your serum creatinine. Serum creatinine is obviously important to test 
especially when you're a larger individual with a lot of muscle mass or you're taking creatine supplements, creatine monohydrate, for example, in which case serum creatinine levels will be elevated. It's still important to keep track of it, even though nowadays we go by our cystat and C levels, which again is also part of the Vigor Steve male lab panel. That's a better indication for kidney health. I would say that's the gold standard for kidney health because cystat and C concentrations is not determined by your muscle mass. And if you see your cystat and C levels increase, it's very safe to say that there's an issue with your kidneys. Again, the trend over time will tell you more than a single point in time. So if you check your creatinine levels over time and your cystat and C levels over time and your creatinine levels are going up, proportionate to the increase in muscle mass, but your cystat and C levels stay nice and leveled, middle bottom of the reference range, then it's pretty safe to say that your kidney health remains intact. It's also important to check your calcium, carbon dioxide, chloride, sodium, potassium, all of your serum electrolytes at least every three months, just to make sure that they're not going out of whack by taking potassium rich foods in combination with telmosartan or nabivalol or other medications which have hyperkalemia as a known side effect. It's important to keep track of your serum electrolytes when you take those kinds of insularies, but when you're drug free and you're not messing with your electrolytes by the use of diuretics or ancillaries, I would say that once per year is more than enough. If you're just stepping off stage, let's say a week later, you took some diuretics, whether that's a Lasix, a diazide or aldactone, whatever, Check your serum electrolytes a week after the show just to make sure that everything is within normal parameters and you can go back to the gym and you don't have to risk a muscle tear or a severe spontaneous cramping because your electrolytes are still out of whack. Right? Check your serum electrolytes first, then you can go back to the gym to prevent injuries from occurring. As part of this comprehensive metabolic panel, there's also an estimated glomerular filtration rate which is based on your serum creatinine levels. Again, this is not going to be as accurate as an estimated glomerular filtration rate based on your cystat and C levels, which is included in my panel. Fasted glucose is also part of the comprehensive metabolic panel, which is important to check at the same time you check your lipids, your hemoglobin A1C and your serum cortisol levels. Again, because these can be all related, whether that's uh, metabolic issues or um, adrenal fatigue, an early onset of adrenal fatigue, right? You check all of that at the same time. And yes, I'm very well aware that everybody nowadays checks their glucose levels at home using a glucometer. If you don't have a glucometer yet, check the description section. I have a link for a glucometer on Amazon, well worth the purchase. You, so you can check your blood glucose levels at home, at the gym, which is wonderful because now you have fundamental insight into your serum glucose concentrations, which is especially important when you're taking performance enhancing drugs that are known to alter your glucose concentrations, like Trembolone, for example, or Clembutrol, or Glorothormone, or Insulin, or IGF-1, or MK677, MOT-C, man, the list goes on. There's a ton of PEDs that alter your glucose levels, whether they go up or down, a glucometer will give you fundamental insights. If you don't have one, purchase one right now, and check your glucose concentrations every time you go in for blood work to match with the other markers which are part of the blood work panel. Hemoglobin A1c, which is glycated hemoglobin located within the red blood cells. When glucose enters the red blood cells, it reacts with hemoglobin. 